Greetings and peace to you. I hope you're well and in good health, of a sober mind and in spiritual equilibrium. It is my great joy to bring to you today, and hopefully until I'm able to complete it, The Imitation of Mary, which is an updated reformation of the older Imitation of Mary, a companion book to Thomas Akempis' Imitation of Christ. Uh, This is not the word-for-word same thing as that older translation and rendition. Uh, God willing, once I finish this, I'll go back and do that one. Obviously, as men, I'm a man, any man watching, imitation of Mary can only go so far. But I encourage you, if you have a significant other, or if you are a woman watching this, you've come across this by divine providence, to stick around and pursue. There's so many beautiful things that you as a woman can learn from Our Lady, and we as men can even learn how to be better men in relationship to women through the study of Our Lady. So, without further ado, I'm going to begin uh, into the preface. So, sorry, we're, we're not yet starting. It's the beginning of the beginning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. The Imitation of Mary by Alexander de Rouville. Preface No sooner had the incomparable Imitation of Christ appeared than the faithful began spontaneously to wish for an imitation of Mary that might be set beside Kempis's great work. Finally, a 16th century Spanish Jesuit, Francisco Arias, published a little book entitled The Imitation of Our Lady in Valencia in the year 1588. And it seemed that the prayers of many devout souls had been answered. But the work was not what they were waiting for. It was a short pamphlet of 12 chapters that dealt in a very general way with the virtues of Mary and was in no way comparable to the great book that had already won the name of Fifth Gospel. The book here translated, on the contrary, was indeed what devotees of Mary had been looking for. It was published in French in 1768 and did not bear its author's name. Italian translations of a later date did, however, have an author's name on the title page, the Abbé de Héroville. Who was the Abbé de Héroville, and how is the initial anonymity to be explained? The author was, in fact, a French Jesuit. Alexandre Joseph de Reville, born at Lyons in 1716. After the Society of Jesus had been suppressed by Pope Clement XIV in 1773, he took the name Abbe de Eroville, thus assimilating himself, as far as title went, to the secular clergy. But even before the suppression by the Pope, Louis XIV had expelled the Society of Jesus from France 
in 1764. For this reason, when the Imitation of Mary was first published in 1768, it had to appear anonymously. The book quickly won a wide readership in France and Belgium and was translated into many languages. The first Italian translation, for example, was published at Padua in 1772, only four years after the book first appeared. In The Imitation of Mary, the author follows the Blessed Virgin, the different mysteries and circumstances of her life, from her Immaculate Conception to her Assumption into Heaven. At each point he reflects on her conduct and her sentiments, thus providing instructive insights which will help every Christian in the varying situations of his or her own life. In order to hold the reader's attention, the author varies the manner in which he presents his reflections. Sometimes he speaks to God, sometimes to Mary, sometimes to the reader. At times, he reflects as though he were by himself in meditation, and very often he has the Blessed Virgin speak to her child, the reader. The order provided by the mysteries of Mary is pursued through the first three books. The fourth takes a different approach, but the devotees of Mary will be pleased that the author here tries to sum up in a few chapters the various aspects of devotion to the Mother of God and the various helps for fostering, maintaining, and reviving the sentiments of respect, love, and trust which her children ought to have for her. The reader will not judge this book as though its author were claiming to rival the perfection of his model, Kempis's Imitation of Christ. He professed, on the contrary, to be fully satisfied if only his book were not totally unlike its model. In fact, however, if we judge by the devotion and solid piety toward God and his Blessed Mother which fill these pages, we must say that author has not been unworthy of his more famous forerunner. Thus ends the preface. I hope you will continue to tune in. I hope to release chapters of this book, which are very short, every day. So please stay tuned. And if you benefit from this, please be sure to... Tell others about it. Spread around the content. God bless you. God love you. God's peace to you. Please pray for me as I pray for you.